us about. Where is he now? He's up in his room, packing. He's drunk. He's crazy. Donald, what can we do? What do you mean he's drunk? Does he know what he's doing? No, I, I don't think so. He, he reeled in here a little after three, singing and making speeches. You can't stop me. Nobody can stop me now. Donald, he was terrible. Well, what does he mean, we can't stop him? He's impossible. He, he thinks he's going to be a great actor just because somebody offered him a job in a summer stock company. Donald, you must stop him. Well, coming in here drunk, who does he think he is? Hello, Dad. Uh, glad I had the chance to say goodbye. Where do you think you're going? Going to work? Yes, sir. Going to my first real job. All right, Frank. Now snap out of it. You got your mother all upset. She thinks you're serious. Can't you see, Donald? He is serious. And drunk, besides. Have you been drinking? I had a couple of beers with the fellows over at Eddie's house. Kind of farewell party. They were wishing me luck. More than anybody around here seems ready to do. Oh, Donald, I told you he means it. Well, if you won't stop him, I will. You're, you're not going past me, Frank. Now, listen, Mother, let's not have a scene. I know you don't want me to take this job, but I'm 18 years old and I know what I want. I want to be an actor, not a lawyer. I don't want to spend the rest of my life in a law library just because you think it's a nice job with a safe future. Frank, you're talking to your mother. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to tell her I've made up my mind. How can you make up your mind? You've been out of high school exactly three days. Don't you think we know something about the world? Look, Dad, you may know all about the world, but you don't know anything about me. You live in your world. I have to make mine. But we want to help you make yours. Maybe you do. But this is the first time you ever mentioned it. Come on, Dad. I know you hate your job down at the paper. But you're stuck with it. How can you help me do what I want to do? I want to be an actor. So long, folks. And anyhow, I wish you luck. Liz, take it easy. It'll be all right. All right. All right. Everything will be all right. I might have known better than to ask you to help me. And that was the last they saw of the boy. He hasn't written home. That was about a week ago? Exactly ten days. He left on a Saturday, and Mrs. Cooper came in last Monday, and I saw her again yesterday. She's awfully worried about the boy. Almost hysterical. So I agreed to phone. Where is the summer theater? At Lake Marion. It's called the Little Theater in the Woods. Oh, sure. I know the place, and Bill Lockhart, who runs it. I could easily call and ask him if the boy arrived safely. Would you? And tell him to tell the boy you phoned, if you don't mind my supervising the supervisor. Why not? And you're right. We shouldn't go behind the boy's back. Are there other children? One, a girl 16. Mrs. Cooper's barely mentioned her. What's your impression of Mrs. Cooper? Well, she's particularly upset now. But I think she's always a bit tense. She's in kind of worry about everything. So she tries to settle things by being strict and bossy. And her husband? I see him today for the first time. But Mrs. Cooper says she can't count on him, that he keeps aloof from the family and leaves all the responsibilities up to her. She feels hurt and left out and unloved. Now she's really frightened by the boy's rebellion. No matter what kind of person Mr. Cooper is, I think she needs a warm, reassuring relationship for a while. Very good. Let's talk it over again after you've seen Mr. Cooper. I'll call you as soon as I've reached Bill. If the boy's all right, the lake may be a good place for him at the moment. I agree. Family service, good afternoon. I'm sorry he's out today. 2.30 Tuesday? Yes, I'll tell him. Thank you for calling.
Can I help you, sir? I'm supposed to see uh, Mrs. Uh, Wright. My name's Donald Cooper. Yes, Mr. Cooper. I'll tell Mrs. Wright you're here. Mrs. Wright, Mr. Cooper is here to see you. Thank you. Yes, Miss Bonham, I'll try them. How do you do, Mr. Cooper? I'm Mrs. Wright. Family service, good afternoon. Just a minute, please. I'll see if she's in. Put your hat on that chair, Mr. Cooper. And sit down. I'm glad you agreed to come in and see me. Well, why shouldn't I come? He's my kid, too. We just had news about Frank. A few minutes ago, we phoned the theater. The director says Frank's been there since last Saturday and is doing very well. Well, that's a relief. At least now I know he's there. He might have written or phoned himself. Young people sometimes aren't very considerate. Considerate? He was downright rude. Oh, not his fault, though. What do you mean? That's well, the way he's been brought up. He's been babied, spoiled. His mother's fussed over him ever since he was an infant. Too much, do you think? Much too much. She can't leave him alone. She can't leave anybody alone. That's another story. Well, I'd like to hear it. No, there's no use. I know you've heard Elizabeth's side, and you want to help us patch up our troubles, but this marriage is true. It can't be patched. You may be right. But as I said before, I'd like to know a little more. Let's hear your side. Oh, I've got no special side. I'm not fighting Elizabeth. She means well. Just can't take it anymore. Oh, I'll pay up, mind you. I'm not running out of Elizabeth and the kids. There's no other woman. I just had it. I'm fed up. Why not tell me what's happened in the last few weeks? Where are we? Had a big fight about Frank. After he ran away, well, I guess Elizabeth told you. She didn't want him to be an actor. Well, how did you feel about it? Did you think it was a good idea? Well, how should I know? The kid's only 18. He just decided to cut bait and go. Well, naturally, she's upset. She believes a lot in sensible jobs and security and all that. And don't you? Well, she worries about those things too much. I... Now, that night after Frank left, I was thinking about it after supper. Suddenly, the whole picture came clear to me. I found myself getting angrier and angrier. What were you angry about? Frank was right. She was starting to ruin the boy's life. Just as she'd ruined mine. Scaring him with words like security. Keeping him from doing what he wanted to do. Whole deal was familiar to me. I, I lived through it myself. What happened that night? Well, at first I tried to be reasonable with her. Oh, look, Liz, all I say is let's give the kid a chance to show what he can do. People like to think for themselves. They want to feel free. Free? Exactly. Free to pick up habits that will ruin his life. What in the world do you mean? I mean learning not to work. Learning to get up at noon. Drinking. Showing off all the time. Oh, 
Don, you know what actors are like. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't. How's the boy going to settle down to a real job when he's finally found out he's got no talent? It'll be just that much harder to face reality. What makes you say he's got no talent? How do you know? Oh, Don, wake up. This is just a dream. He's had a role in two high school plays. Now he has a chance to play little parts in a summer theater. Does that prove he has talent? All right. Maybe it is a dream, so what? It's Frank's dream, and he's got a right to it. Lots of people have dreams, Elizabeth. And it's their parents' duty to tell them when it's time to wake up. Frank is an actor. Why, it's preposterous. Look, Elizabeth. What's preposterous is your fantastic notion that you were born with some magic gift for knowing what people are. Don't you ever stop for a moment to consider that you might be wrong sometimes? That some people might have talents you can't understand? That maybe they just want to try something new because it interests them or excites them? Don, what's the matter with you? You shouting! Well, then maybe you'll hear me. I've been trying to tell you this for the last 18 years and you haven't heard it yet. Even though the kid knows it. That's the matter with me. Everything's the matter with me. I'm over 40 years old, Elizabeth. Still working at a job I took 20 years ago because you made speeches about security and reality. When I was hunting for a chance to prove my talent. To find work I wanted to do. You know, I just might have made a success of that farm newspaper I wanted to start. I might have found work in the country where I liked living. But no, it was always too risky, not safe, not sure. And now I'm still selling advertising week after week to the storekeeper that pass for merchants in this city. Is this your idea of reality? Because if it is, then I don't want your reality. I hate all this. Don, you don't know what you're saying. I know exactly what I'm saying. I hate the way I live, the way I work, everything I do. And I've hated it for a long time, Elizabeth. All these years you stopped me at every turn with your line that is all for the children. And now you start all over again doing the same thing to them you did to me. Did to you? Yes, and I'm not going to let it happen. I'm going to protect them from your great gift for knowing how they should talk and think and breathe. You're not going to push the kids around too, Elizabeth. Not if I have to break up the family. Don? And I went out then and took a walk around the block. I slept on the living room sofa that night. If you can call it sleeping. I guess Elizabeth had a bad night too. I'm sure she did. Yes, the next day was Sunday and we hardly talked. Then Monday she came here, she told me. I'm sorry about her being so upset, first the boy, then me. But I just can't help it. How do you mean, sorry? Well, it's hard to explain. Though I blame Elizabeth for the best I'm in. I know it's not her fault. She can't help being what she is. Now, now take this thing about money, for instance. It's funny, it seems to be all she ever thinks about. Yet she never spends money on herself. Like some women do. Hardly ever goes out. Well, let's get back to you. You talk about the mess you're in. How bad is it? Pretty bad. If it weren't for my fishing, I don't think I could go on week after week. Fishing? I'm president of the local anglers club. You spend a lot of time at it? Quite a bit. You see, it's a way of getting off by myself. Getting away from people. Why do you want to be alone? So I can get a little peace and quiet. That's the kind of a person I am. I need time to think, or sometimes not to think. 
I can relax when there's just nobody around telling me what to do, nobody expecting me to do something I don't want to do. Besides, I get a kick out of just being in the outdoors. Sometimes I'm fishing, I get the feeling I own the stream. That's because I know it better and can use it better than anybody else. Isn't it a little lonely? Oh, you get a great kick out of winning a really tough fight. There's some special satisfaction in outwitting the crafty ones. And I admit I enjoy knowing I'm considered to be the best fisherman in the county. Fishing really seems to make up to you for a lot of things you miss in life. I think so. Well, I miss them in life. What do you mean? Well, even if you fish a lot, you may spend part of a hundred days a year at it. What about the other 265? Maybe fishing isn't enough. Maybe you're missing a lot of satisfactions. What satisfactions? Well, it might be nice to get some kick out of your real life. Your job and your home and family. Sure, but how? Why not think about it yourself and then come in and talk to me? Say next week at the same time? Perhaps we could think of some ways together. Don't you think you've been missing most of the fun in life? Well, I don't know. I... You know, you make me feel like a quitter. Not a quitter, I hope. Someone who hasn't quite learned to enjoy life, let's say. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mrs. Wright, down at family service. She's no fool. She's a very sensible young woman, I think. Yeah, I've been there three, no, four times now. I'm still quite impressed. I like the way she thinks about things. If you're after information, she told me I didn't have to discuss our meetings with you. Okay, okay, I know that. I wasn't after anything. I... Just wanted to tell you I like her. I'm sorry, Don. I didn't mean to be cross. I'm just so upset these days. I, I don't seem to know right from wrong anymore. I never dreamed I'd talk to a stranger about our personal affairs. Uh, neither did I. Did I. About Frank about his running off to act. You know, I never told you, but it was Mrs. Wright who helped me to get over it. She did? Yes. She was the one who suggested getting an outsider's opinion about Frank's ability. So I went to see Mr. Kent, who coached the school plays. I went to his house. What did he say? Well, he said Frank showed a real flair for acting. Oh, he, he wouldn't call it talent, mind you. Not at this stage, but he considered it a real flair. I wonder where Frank got it. Well, as a matter of fact, you know, my father was a wonderful speaker. Yeah, I remember. But I still don't think acting is any life. It won't be too late for him to start college in the fall. You don't give up, do you, Elizabeth? Oh, Don, I only want the boy to be happy. Well, I don't know if people can change. She's trying, that's obvious, but doesn't mean much. Well, what about you? That's what I mean. I'm not changing much either. Oh, I made a lot of good resolutions, but they don't come to anything. 
Well, maybe it's not as easy as you thought it was. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Well, now, now take this one thing, this business about Frank. You asked me questions about him, and I was stuck. I, I didn't know the kid at all. So I made up my mind to find out something about him. What did you do? Well, there's pretty good fishing up at Lake Marion. So last Saturday, I thought I'd try it. As long as I was up there, I thought I might as well have dinner with Frank. I tried to talk to him, but it was like an Indian powwow, mostly grunts. What did you talk about? Well, I guess I talked about fishing. You know, lures, tackle, stuff like that. We listened, but I could see he wasn't interested. He, he kept talking about a play by Shaw he's going to have a part in. How about your job? Is it going any better? Oh, pretty good month this last one. Same grind. Your heart isn't in it? No, but it's a living. You know, maybe Elizabeth was right. With almost no capital, starting a paper like I've been dreaming about. It's pretty risky these days. Would it take much? Oh, several thousand dollars. Five. Ten. It's funny, but I don't really know. Haven't you ever tried to work out an estimate? No, I haven't. You know, maybe I don't want to know the cold fact. Whenever I think about it, I get scared. I think maybe that's been going on for years. My being scared, I mean. Maybe it had nothing to do with Elizabeth at all. Could be. Funny thing to have to admit. Being scared. reason he's coming here is to take me to the party. He still has time to make other plans. I don't want Paul to make other plans. I know you don't. Could you please move your argument to some other room? This is awfully important work I'm doing, and this table's the only place I can do it. I'm sorry, Donald. I, I'm just finishing up. Besides, I've made up my mind. Mother, you can't do this to me. Come into the kitchen, Phyllis. There's nothing wrong with Paul. What's wrong is his age. You've just turned 16 and he's 20. You're in high school and he's in college. It's just not right for you to keep going out with a boy, uh, with a man who's that much older than you are. Oh, Mother, you don't know what you're talking about. Phyllis? I'm sorry, Mother, but you're not being fair to Paul. He's Mary Ames' cousin and you always said you liked the Pringles. By the time he's out of college... You'll be old enough to decide who you want to go out with, and in the meantime, I think you might listen to me a little. Elizabeth, can I speak to you a minute alone? Now, Donald, I have a perfect right to object. Of course you do, but... Give us alone for a few minutes, Phyllis. Oh, Daddy, you Phyllis, don't... you heard me. Nobody understands me. Well, what I can't understand is, with all these boys in a school and all these... Friends of Frank, you think she'd find someone we know. Well, sure, but maybe we ought to let her go this time. Once she can brag about going out with him, she'll probably call it quits. You know how anxious she is to collect new dates. The way these kids carry on nowadays. You really think it's all right? Yes, I think so. 
It all gets so complicated. Well, these problems seem so important now, but in a few years, we'll laugh at them. Well, I only want them to be happy, but I always seem to be fighting with them about something. Well, they're, they're just exploring, Liz. They, you know, they don't really know what they do want. I guess no one can learn without making mistakes. That's what Mrs. Wright says. They have to find out for themselves. Yeah, most people do. Yes, I know. I know that's what you think, too. That's why we fought about Frank. Now, I, I just try to avoid the dangers that I see ahead, and I get so frightened when I think of Frank or Phyllis getting into any real trouble. That's because they're your kids. Well, Mrs. Wright says it's partly that, but... Maybe it's also because I'm too easily frightened for them and for myself. But why should you be frightened? I shouldn't be, that's just it, but often I am. You know, I think of myself as being all alone, taking all the responsibility, doing all the worrying as if, well, as if all the rest of you were children. Well. Well, that's partly my fault. I've kind of left the worrying to you while I fished or dreamed of a never-never land. That's what I'm trying to make up for now. Not much good at it, I guess. Oh, but you are, Don. You are. Well, now take this Phyllis business. Should we let her go? Well, if you think it's all right, I think so, too. And what about... Well, as long as he's going on to college, I'm satisfied. Even if he doesn't take law? Well, you don't think I give up that easily. A new job? Well, it's not exactly a new job. Just went down the corridor to the next office and created something. You've got me confused now. You were the one who suggested it. I was? Kept on talking about the importance of finding satisfaction in my own work. Well, I stewed about that for a long time. You see, what I wanted wasn't advertising. It was a farm paper. It was work that would get me out of town. So then I got an idea. Why not use the spot I was already in? I still don't understand. Well, I went next door and sold T.R., you know, my boss, the publisher, on an idea for increasing advertising revenue. He listens to me on things like that. So I told him about the number of potential readers we were missing in the 50-mile radius around the city. Country people who didn't care for our society pages or our stories on city politics. Why not a supplement for them twice a week? Rural news, farm features. The added circulation would boost advertising rates across the board and get us additional accounts besides. It was a tempting plum and he reached for it. So for the next six months, I'm concentrating on the examiner's new downstate supplement. It's a real chance. It certainly is. I hope it works out. It's all due to you. A minute ago, you said you created it yourself. That's right, I did. Then let's say with your help. Oh, I almost forgot. Could you postpone my next appointment at Elizabeth's for a few weeks? I'm making a little trip to see how other countries' papers are run, and she's coming with me. Wonderful. It'll be the first time we've been away alone together since, well, since the kids were born. Well, have a good time. And call me when you get back. Goodbye. Goodbye. 